The 2015 Silver Gavel Award for Radio goes to Serial, season one, produced by Serial. Coming up this season on Serial. I think that there are other people involved. Like, maybe, I think maybe he was set up. I think he was set up somehow. Clearly you could tell something was going on that wasn't good. I mean, it was just strange behavior for anybody. Basically threatened me. Like, you know what happened to hey, This is what's going to happen to you. That's how I felt that day. What are you thinking right now? You have the same smile I do. I'm literally thinking, like, could, like, could he have gone crazy? Shane told me he was being blackmailed by Adnan. Because Adnan knew that Jay couldn't go to the police. Like, if this works, and he, I mean, every question we've had for the past eight months, he knows it. Yeah, I mean, who else well did it? You know, there's like, running out of suspects. Serial is a reinvestigation of a 1999 murder case um, out of Baltimore, and it involved teenagers, um, all from the same high school. What we found by reinvestigating this case is basically that the story that the prosecution presented at trial really couldn't have happened based on the evidence that we looked at, which is mostly cell phone records and cell tower records and stuff. And it brings up, I think, a lot of questions about friendship and love and police work and immigrants and Baltimore and just all of these things that happen in real life. Anand Sayed is serving a life sentence uh, for first-degree murder in Maryland. Back in 1999, when he was 17, he was um, accused and then convicted later of killing his ex-girlfriend, who was a classmate at his high school. I spent about a year reporting the story before we launched, but then continued reporting as we were in production. What the podcast format allowed us to do is be really responsive to new information that I was getting, both because of the podcast, but also because I was just continuing reporting anyway. So we could be responsive in a way that I think would have been really difficult in any other format, really, for audio. It's not one of those cases where you can point to some obvious corruption in our judicial system. It's a case where a series of small decisions and and assumptions kind of led inexorably to this conviction. But when you take it apart, when we took it apart, it just felt like there were so many questions still unsolved, unanswered, and to me, a lot of reasonable doubt in the evidence that was presented at trial. If the American Bar Association thinks we're on to something, it's just so gratifying. And I'm not an attorney. I don't have any legal expertise. I don't have any legal training. Just to know that you guys think what we did was legitimate and, and worthy was incredibly gratifying. So the serial production team is currently busy at work on season two. Um, Mightily they tried to get here, but regret they've been unable to attend in person. Um, So as a point of personal privilege, I just, I wanted to say that I am not one of those people who walks around with earbuds in their ear, you know, listening to their iPhones. But I listened to every hour of this podcast I listened while I was walking to the metro. I listened while I was gardening. I listened while I was in the car. Everywhere I listened, walking around the house. Um, I couldn't put it down. And as Koenig's reporting unfolds, it reveals a very human story that we all can relate to. You rethink all your assumptions about alibis, about witnesses, evidence, police investigations, and you come to realize the wisdom of our reasonable doubt standard. So we accept the silver gavel on their behalf and ask you to join in congratulating them. (laughs) 